الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منازل لتعلموا عدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك الا بالحق يفصل الايات لقوم يعلمون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حافظين يرفعان الى الله تعالى صحيفه فيرى في اولها وفي اخرها خيرا الا قال الله لملائكته اني اشهدكم اني قد غفرت لعبدي ما بين طرفيها او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders beloved brothers in islam one interesting verse in the quran when allah will summon those who have been doomed to eternal damnation those who have displeased allah those who have spent their lives having denied the signs the multiple signs from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they will be summoned before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a rationale will be placed in front of them quran describes this rationale where allah says awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru feehi man tadhakkar وجاءكم النذير فذوقوا فما للظالمين من نصير this verse of the quran is ajeeb if one has to ponder over its meaning allah will say to those people that had spent their lives in his disobedience in inviting his wrath in denying his signs Now jahannam is in front of them Allah protect us Allah will say to them awalam nu'ammirkum didn't we give you enough number of years this word nu'ammirkum the root word is umar umar means year awalam nu'ammirkum how many years of life we gave you in the world in other words we can gauge from this verse in the quran that these were people that may have lived for 40 50 60 years awalam nu'ammirkum so many years so much chance so much opportunity we gave you for what ma yatadhakkaru feehi man tadhakkar in order to heed in order to realize how much of chance how much of opportunity how many reminders we gave you And then Allah says wa ja'akum an-nadhir our warnings came to you Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam came to you the revealed scriptures and books and the Quran came to you our warnings our reminders came to you mufassirin explain commentators explain what are the warnings Allah is speaking about outwardly overtly it would refer to anbiya ali musallatu was salam it would refer to the revealed scriptures but over and above that what is the link between number of years and allah's warners every setting sun is a warner every passing year is a warner every birthday is a warner 
every hallmark by which you map and by which you measure how many years of your life has passed is Allah's warner to you. This is what Quran is telling us. Awalam nu'ammirkum. How many years we gave you? How many years we gave you with the passing of the years, didn't you realize? Didn't you pause? Didn't you put the brakes on? Didn't you think? Didn't you caution yourself? With the number of janazas that you saw? With the young age turning to old age? With the health becoming sickness? With the constantly changing situations and conditions around you? Year upon year upon year, awalam nu'ammirkum. Didn't we give you sufficient number of years for you to put the brakes and realize, afahasibtum annama khalaqnakum abatha wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon. Didn't we give you enough time to realize that this life is not a joke? We didn't create all this around you without purpose. People are not dying without purpose. The sun is not rising without a purpose. The sun is not setting without a purpose. You are not breathing in and out 20,000 plus minus times a day without a purpose. The tragedy, the travesty, my respected brothers that is facing you and I, is if we look, the system of this world is such that Islam and the Muslims will not always be dominant. Allah Ta'ala says, تِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ nas. There will be different empires, different rulers, different periods. Some will rise up, some will go down. This is the system of the world. And if we are not careful, when a nation dominates economically, politically, socially, educationally, scientifically, then what happens? Those that are dominated, the dominant nation exports its culture, exports its religion, exports its festivities, exports its revered occasions. And if the dominant nation, that nation that has been dominated economically, politically, socially, educationally, scientifically, if they are not careful, then this inferiority complex is created where they also want to start imitating the dominant nation. And the bigger problem that you and I are facing is that the enemies of Islam have introduced new things, what they say, coexistence. Inter, inter-religious tolerance. There is nothing wrong with tolerating one another. There is nothing wrong with living together, coexisting with one another. We have the beautiful example of our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came with what? Makarim akhlaq. He came with the height of akhlaq, with the perfection of akhlaq. Character the like of which has never been seen. That character which Allah, Allah in his Quran takes qasam upon qasam, oath upon oath. And Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ There's no easy way to translate this. Simple, basic terms. If you want to understand it in layman's terms, شَابَاش مِرَ Habib. Congratulations to you, my beloved. You have reached the absolute epitome of akhlaq and character. There were munafiqeen in Madina Munawwara. There was once a delegation of Christians that came to Medina Munawwara that were housed in Masjid e Nabawi. There were Jews in Medina Munawwara. They were kuffar and mushrikeen. They were enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught us how to coexist. He taught us the word Islam means peace. He taught us the message of Islam. He taught us consideration for one another. 
But with all that, he taught us, he taught us never to compromise our beliefs. Coexistence does not mean compromise. Coexistence does not mean become dominated psychologically. Coexistence does not mean that you develop an inferiority complex, a classical example of what I am referring to, where a dominant nation clouds your intellect. Allah says the passage of years is a sign. Allah says old age is a warning. Allah says every new year is a wake-up call. Allah says every birthday, every hallmark by which the movement of time is measured is what? Go back, go back to our master sallallahu alayhi wa I'm digressing. Try and understand this. He explained to us what is the sign of intelligence. Today who we think is intelligent? Somebody who's got a PhD. Or somebody who's got a university degree. Or somebody who can bamboozle us with fancy terms. We think that's an intelligent man. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was his intelligence? Wahab bin Munabbih rahimahullah ta'ala says, Inna Allah ta'ala lam yu'ti jami'a al-nas min badi dunya ila inqidaiha min al-aqli fi jambi aqlihi illa ka khabbati ramlin bayna rimali dunya He says if the combined uqul and intelligence of every human being from Adam alayhi salam to the last person to come before qiyamah that to be pulled together and equated to one grain of sand, the aql and intelligence of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be all the grains of sand on the surface of the earth. The master of intelligence. This question is put, man akya sunnas. Who is the most intelligent person amongst you? Man ahzam, man ahzam nas. Two, two rewires. Akya sunnas, akya sun, ahzam nas. Most intelligent, most, most Person with the deepest insight, ahzamun nas, ahzam, akyas, intelligent, perceptive. Who is that person? What is the answer our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives? Aktharuhum dhikran lil maut wa ashadduhum isti'adadan lahu. Who is the most intelligent man amongst you? Is the one who is not deaf, not dumb, and not blind to the reminders of death. The one who understands with every passing year, your life is getting shorter, not getting longer. The one who understands vacation, December, New Year, 31st December, midnight, is not a cause of celebration. It's a warning. It's a terrifying warning. It's a reminder for you. And yet, this mental slavery to those that have become dominant in the world today has caused us like fools to blindly follow them and we are celebrating these occasions. Everyone is on a holiday mood. Everyone is on a vacation. Come 21st, 31st December midnight, even people with little bit of intelligence behave like those who have lost their akal. That new year is not a celebration. It's like a bomb going off. How many qasams and oaths our Allah takes to remind you of this? Wal asr by the oath of time. Wal layli ida yasr by the oath of the night as it passes the day. Wal layli ida yaghsha by the oath of the night as its darkness envelops. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى By the oath of the day as it lights up. وَالشَّمْسِ By the oath of the sun. وَالْقَمَرِ By the oath of the noon, moon. وَالنَّجْمِ By the oath of the stars. All these qasams and oaths Allah is taking. Time, time, time. You put your hand in your pocket, that 100 or 200 rand note that you thought was there is no longer there. You are parishan, you can't think straight. My 100 rand, my 200 rand is gone. And yet the years of your life are slipping away. That cupboard is coming closer and closer. 
birthday upon birthday, new year upon new year, like the poet says, Inna lanafrahu bil ayyami naqtawha, wa kulla yawmin madha yudni min al-ajali, fa'amal li nafsika qabla al-mawti mujtahidan, fa inna man ribhu wal khusranu fil amali, nujadid sururan bil hilali idha bada, wa ma hiya illa sayfu lil hatfi yantadhi, idha tamma al-aam, fa hiya kinayatun wa tarjumatun, an shatri umrin qad inqada, he says, pagal, foolish, blind, Insan tere akal ko kya ho gaya? What has happened to your thinking? Are you so enslaved to the culture of others? That years are passing and you are celebrating. Kulla yawmin mada, every passing day is taking you closer to your grave. He's reminding you of your moth. He's reminding you of the day when you have to stand in front of Allah. Hassan Basri, rahimahullah, that sage of Islam, how he puts it, every day when the sun rises, Yabna Adam, inni khalqun jadeed. O oh, Ibn Adam, O oh, insan, I am a new creation of Allah. Allah has given you one more day. Wa ana fi ma ta'mal fi ya ghadan alayka shaheed. But be warned. You are not given this day to spend it in sharab to spend it in zina, to spend it in music, to spend it in haram activities, to spend it in azan upon azan falling upon deaf ears, and to spend it in riba, to spend it in lies, to spend it in treachery. Why? Because, وَأَنَا فِي مَا تَعْمَلْ فِي غَدًا عَلَيْكَ شَهِيد Allah gave you this day to earn your jannah. Allah gave you this day to connect with Him. Allah gave you this day to, if you didn't do it yesterday, at least today make tawbah. Allah gave you this day to come into the masjid. Allah gave you this day to earn your akhirat. Allah gave you this day to show the akhlaq and character of Islam. And know and understand, know and understand that every second of how you will spend this day is going to be a witness in your favor tomorrow or a plaintiff against you. Why? Bala. وَرُسُلُنَا لَدَيْهِمْ يَكْتُبُونَ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلِ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْآيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِ السُّدُورِ Verse upon verse in the Qur'an. No time to go into translation. What is Allah saying? Allah says, Oh my banda, my messengers are with you. رُسُلُنَا لَدَيْهِمْ They are with you. On your right shoulder, on your left shoulder, they are with you. Yaktubun, they are writing down everything that you are doing. Every time your eye strains, strays, Allah says, I know. Every time your heart plans, cunning plots, khainat al ayun, wa ma sudur, what your heart conceals, Allah says, is apparent to me. We are closer to you than your jugular vein. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلُ Every time you open this tongue, sometimes you're insulting someone, sometimes you're swearing at someone, sometimes you're breaking the heart of your wife, or your child, or your staff, or those you come into contact with, insulting them, he speaking maliciously to them, making ghibat about someone, backbiting someone, slandering someone, hurting the feelings of someone, everything, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلُ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ how are you populating this day? How are you passing this time? Quran is telling you. It's being written down. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu explains this verse. He says, Yuktab kullu ma takallama bihi ibn Adam. Every utterance is being written down. Hatta qawluhu ra'itu wa dhahabtu wa dakhaltu wa rajatu wa jitu. Even when you say, I entered, I left, I saw, I moved, I walked, I talked. All that also is being written down. And a day is coming. مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا On that day, this mujrim will exclaim in shock when all this is opened up in front of him and say, what type of a book is this? What type of a book is this? There's nothing hidden here. Even what I thought I got away with is here. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَادِرًا Allah says they will find every action in front of them. وَمَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And we will not oppress anyone. In the financial world, this much they even understand. End of the year, what they do? Financial audit. 
They do a financial audit of the year that passed. And then they do a progression for the next year. Every business does this. We understand commercial terms. Why don't we do that? Why don't we press the pause button by one year past all the haram, all the lies, all the cheating, all the inheritance of my sisters, inheritance of my female relatives I ate up, all those false documents that I signed, all the haq, all the promises I made that I didn't deliver upon, all my business deals where I dupe somebody and deceive somebody. Take the audit! Because a day is coming, a day is coming by the qasam of my Allah. Allah protect you, Allah protect me. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tazulu qadama abdin. La tazulu qadama abdin. Hatta yus'ala an arba. He said, like when somebody's foot is stuck in quagmire. It's stuck in the mud, it can't move. This is the analogy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives. He says, the day is coming, your foot will be stuck in the ground. You won't be able to move one inch until these questions are put in front of you. An umrihi fi ma afna. An shababihi fi ma abla. The youth we gave you, Allah is going to ask you, that youth we gave you, what did you do with it? The life, Umar. The life we gave you, what did you do? How did you spend it? We gave you the air to breathe, the eyes to see, the heart to beat, the hands to grasp, the feet to walk. We showered ni'mat upon ni'mat. You sinned, we forgave you. You sinned, we forgave you. We still showered our ni'mats and our bounties upon you. Azan fell on one ear, it fell on a deaf ear. Another azan came, and then another azan came. And then you even saw the janazah, then you even saw the graveyard. We send the Quran to you, we send the hadith to you, we send the anbiya to you. We gave you reminder upon reminder upon reminder. What did you do? How much longer way are you going to be in denial? New year is not a celebration. Birthday is not a celebration. 31st December is not something we should be looking forward to. Don't be dominated mentally. Rise above this. Set the correct example. This is not a vacation time. This is a wake up call. This is an alarm bell. Take stock. The year that passed, the year that is coming. Like Hassan Basri, to complete what he said. <coughs> Every day. That day is saying to you, utilize me correctly. Utilize me correctly. The new day use it correctly. The new year use it correctly. Why? Because once I am gone, once I am gone, I am never coming back. This chance is not going to come again. That time they'll cry. They'll cry. The, what, what will the cry be? Rabbir ji'oon. Rabbir ji'oon. La'alli amalu salihan fi ma tarakt. Ya Allah, send me back. I realize now. I realize now, send me back, give me an extension. Now I'll listen, now I'll heed, now I'll change, now I'll do this, now I'll do that. Allah sunnat, Allah sunnat, Allah sunnat. Walan tajida li sunnati Allahi tabdila. Walan tajida li sunnati Allahi tahwila. Allah sunnat kaan kol kar sun lena. Listen with the ears of Iman. Lay yu akhir Allahu nafsan. Ida ja ajaluha. No one, no one, no one is getting a second chance. Once more comes, once that crunch point comes, once the cutoff comes. So they'll be Nayaz, so a 60 year old man. He said, my brother, what is your age? The man says, I'm 60. He says, Mundu siti nasana tasiru ila rabbik tu yushiku an tasil. He says, for 60 years, you're on a journey. You don't think the destination is near? You don't think this 31st December is a reminder that that cover has come nearer? How much longer are we going to be mentally dominated? This is not a holiday. This is not a vacation. And then, everywhere, what is it? Christmas celebrations. So that even Muslims, what we say is coexist. 
Coexist. Coexist does not mean compromise. Coexist does not mean sit back and look at this batil. Speak to the people with love and muhabbat. Make them understand what is Merry Christmas. First of all, if you look at it, if you look at it holistically, empirical evidence indicates clearly Isa alayhi salam was not born on the 25th of December. This pagan practice started 362 years after the ascension of Isa alayhi salam. Even the Christian scholars realized this is a commercial enterprise. And yet, Muslims, Merry Christmas. What, what does Merry Christmas mean? How can you possibly be celebrate or even identify with this? This is Ain Shirk. This is Ain Shirk. Look at Quran. Look at Quran. Look at Quran. What does my Allah say? Understand this. I am not saying this to speak against Christians. Allah guide them, make dua for them. I am saying this out of the love of Isa alayhi salam. This Merry Christmas or what it symbolizes is what? The Nauzubillah, the son of Allah was born so that eventually he could be sacrificed as a savior to humanity so that all your sins are expunged. This is such a lie against Isa alayhi salam. This is such an insult against that beloved Nabi of Allah. What he stood for, this goes against everything that Isa alayhi salam stood for. To say Merry Christmas, leave identifying with Christians, leave compromising your religion. You are insulting this Nabi of Allah. You are insulting his entire life, what he stood for. Ayyu dhambi a'zam. Ayyu dhambi a'zam. My Nabi was asked this question, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the worst possible sin a man can commit? What is the worst possible crime a man can commit. What was the answer? Zina? Sharab? Drugs? Idolatry? Drugs? Murder? What did he answer? Al-Ishraqu Billah To make shirk with Allah. There is no greater crime than this. This coexistence is not an excuse to teach our children this mental slavery. Allah forgive us, today in Muslim homes, some trees put up. Muslim businesses, advertising, advertising, look at the adverts, merry season, merry what? Are we so, are we so filled with malice and greed of dunya that we are able to prepare to compromise every principle of Islam? We are doing a disservice. We are doing a disservice to those Christians also by not using this as an opportunity to explain why we don't say Merry Christmas. With hikmat explain to them, with love explain to them. I'm not saying Merry Christmas, why? Because I love Isa alayhi salam more than you. I am prepared to defend his message. I will not insult that Nabi of Allah like this. What does Quran say? قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا They said, Rahman. Look at Quran. Quran is ajeeb. Time is limited. And I'm trying to explain. Unfortunately, time is passing. Ar-Rahman. If you look technically, in the, in the context of what is being said, Allah is issuing a severe warning. So the word Rahman technically shouldn't be here. It should be قال الله قال الجبار اتخذوا the Jabbar, the mighty Allah becomes upset and angry that they are saying that he has a son. But what does Allah say? قال اتخذ الرحمن ولدا The beloved, the compassionate Allah says that they have ascribed a son to him. Why? In this is an indirect message that the Christians say that out of the love and compassion of Allah, Allah sent His Son to be sacrificed for the emancipation of humanity. In other words, they are using Allah's mercy to justify their shirk. They are using Allah's mercy to justify their shirk. قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا What does Allah say? لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا idda. What you have brought is horrendous. The poison of the statement. Merry Christmas. The birth of Isa alayhi salam and everything that it signifies. Listen to Quran. 
says, this very claim is horrendous. How horrendous? How poisonous? How destructive? Look at the graphic description Quran gives. Takadu samawat yatafattarna minhu. The seven heavens, the seven heavens almost were rent asunder. وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضِ The earth almost split. وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّى And the mountain ranges almost toppled over. Look at this graphic description. What is Allah saying? That the heavens and the earth, Quran tells us, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَا تَفْقَهُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ تُسَبِّحُ لَوْ سَمَاوَاتُ السَّبَعِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ The heavens, the earth, the skies, the mountains, every one of them is more Muslim today, Allah forgive us, than you and I also. They have more tawheed than you and I. Every one of them is making tasbih of Allah, taqdees of Allah. Every one of them has been created on the boundaries, on the foundation of tawheed. Shahid Allah, annahu la ilaha illahu. There is no partner with Allah. There is no deficiency with Allah. There is no defect with Allah. He does not beget, nor was he begotten. He has no weakness, no reliance, no dependence. He is ghani. He is above everything. آتِ الرَّحْمَانِ إِنْ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحْمَانِ أَبَدَا Everything in the heavens, everything in the earth, every Christian, every Muslim, every Mushrik, Isa alayhi salam, every Nabi of Allah will come before Allah as a slave. No one is the son of Allah. Allah has no dependence. He is Ahad, He is Samad. The heavens and the earth, Quran is giving us this graphic description. They have to hear this statement of shirk. They can't bear it. They can't bear this poison. They can't bear this filth. So as a result of it, they don't want to exist anymore. Allah says, because the heavens and the earth have to listen to this day and night, they are making tasbih of Allah. Taqdees of Allah, declaring Allah's purity. Now you are forcing them to listen to the shirk, to this poison, to this filth. Because of that, they don't want to exist anymore. The sky wants to split, the earth, they want to be rent asunder. The mountains want to topple. Allah out of His mercy is keeping them in place. Forcing them, forcing them to listen to this filth. And you, with absolute smiling face, Merry Christmas. Weigh this in the light of Quran. Coexistence does not mean compromise. My Nabi hosted Christians sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he taught us akhlaq, akhlaq and character. Coexistence does not mean sell your deen. Coexistence does not mean become apologetic about the basic fundamental principles of Islam. Coexistence does not mean use festivities of shirk and batil to become to advance your commercial needs. Use this as an opportunity to explain to those people who tomorrow will have to stand in front of Allah and give account for what they are doing. Use this as an opportunity to teach them how the honor of Isa is being preserved in the Quran. How the majesty of that Nabi and his message is being preserved. The Tawheed of Allah, the oneness of Allah. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to say, Ijtanibu, a'da Allahi fi eidihim. He used to say, stay away from the festivities of the enemies of Allah. لا تتخذوا على المشركين في لا تدخلوا على المشركين في كنائسهم يوم عيدهم فإن السخط تنزل عليهم. He used to say, do not even enter into the places of worship of the mushrikeen and the idolaters on the days of their Eid, on the days of their festivities. Why? Because Allah's anger is descending. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ 
Deen in front of Allah is only Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ فَلَيْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ Look for any other way, it is never ever going to be accepted. Unfortunately, when a nation, like I mentioned earlier, when a nation is, is financially, educationally, socially, economically, scientifically dominated, then the sickness creeps in that you want to imitate those that are dominating you. Do not sell your deen. Don't plant the seed in your children to be apologetic about the oneness of Allah, about preserving the dignity of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, about, about representing the akhlaq and character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anniversary is not a celebration. New year is not a celebration. End your year on a good note. Start your year on a good note. Take, use this period as a reflection of the fallibility of the fact that your life is passing. Make Tawbah, at least make a resolution, if you want to use the fancy terms they use. Make this resolution that in the new year, not one single Salah will be made Qaza. I will be in the masjid five times a day. Look at, look at the message of mercy our Nabi gives. End something on a good note. Start something on a good note. I mentioned this hadith in the beginning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ حَافِذِينَ يَرْفَعَانِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى صَحِيفَةً He said, when every day ends, every new day starts. Both these periods, morning and evening, Allah's messengers rise up. They present your kar guzari for that entire day. If Allah sees there is goodness in the beginning and goodness in the ending, Allah's mercy is such, Allah says to His angels, Ya malaikati inni ushidukum, anni ghafartu li abdi ma bayna tarfiha. Oh my angels, I make you a witness. Whatever happened in between, I forgive it. Why? Because He started on a good note and entered on a good note. This is Allah's mercy. New year is an opportunity for tawbah. New Year is an opportunity for change. New Year is a wake-up call. New Year is a reminder. Don't become dominated. Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. If you will imitate a nation, Rasulullah wasallam said, Allah will raise you with them. Allah protect you, Allah protect me. Great scholars of Islam, Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn al-Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, read their fatawa. To say Merry Christmas, they say, to congratulate someone over the shirk is worse than if you see somebody drinking wine, if you see somebody committing murder, if you see somebody committing zina, and you say congratulations to them, that is a lesser sin than to say Merry Christmas. Because what are you congratulating? What are you exonerating? What are you praising? The greatest insult to Allah, that which the heavens and the earth cannot bear, a massacre of the message of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, that beautiful Nabi of Allah, who Allah raised up, who gave his whole life to preserve the wahdaniyat and the tawheed of Allah. He was insulted like this, and you are perpetuating this lie and this myth. Have mercy upon those we are living. Coexist with them by showing them akhlaq, by using this as an opportunity with love to explain to them why these words will never leave my lips. Merry Christmas. Why I will never identify with that. Allah give us tawfiq. Allahu Akbar Allah.